Hello and welcome to a Vector Tut's Quick Tip Screencast. My name is Cheryl Graham. Today I'm going to show you some things that you might not know about the Rotate tool, and we're going to end up with an image something like this. When you choose the Rotate tool, you'll see a little crosshairs at the center of your object. This is the reference point. The object will be rotated from there. I'm just going to undo that, but what if you want to rotate the object from a different reference point? All you do is click once where you want to place the point, and now the object will rotate around that point. Double-clicking the Rotate tool will bring up a dialog box where you can enter a precise angle for your rotation. By default, the reference point is at the center of the object. Enter a value and click the Preview button to see the rotation. Entering a positive angle will rotate counterclockwise. A negative number will rotate the object clockwise and still around that center reference point. But what if you want a different reference point, but you want to still be able to control the rotation precisely? Hold down the Option or Alt key and click to place the reference point. This will bring up the dialog box simultaneously, where you can then enter your angle. You don't have to have the reference point on the object itself. It can be anywhere on the artboard, and the object will still rotate around it like so. To get the sun rays, we'll start with one, then rotate and copy it multiple times. To do that, place the reference point, then start to drag the shape, and just after you drag, hold down the Option or Alt key to make a copy. You have to start dragging first. If I hold down the Option key too soon, it'll bring up the dialog box as before. So again, set the reference point, drag, and then hold down the modifier key. The cursor will change to a double one to let you know that you're making a copy. I'm now going to make several duplicates, all at random angles. I've obviously skipped ahead here, and you can see that I have several overlapping rays, and I filled them with a radial gradient and then adjusted the gradient on each one. With a few more elements and a clipping mask, you can turn this simple technique into an inspirational background.